Hi everyone. Welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host Logendra Kumar and today we will discuss how to prepare blood agar. If you have seen my previous videos, in my previous video I have discussed that blood agar is used for the growth of Staphylococcus aureus. This is an enriched media. That is why it is used for various kinds of microorganisms, for the growth of various kinds of microorganisms, and it provides a nutritious, a nutritious environmental conditions uh, for the, those microorganisms. So it's really important to know how to prepare this uh, media. So as you can see in this particular slide, I'm showing you that we need a specific blood agar base also known as DSA and we mix the blood agar base with warm blood and then after plating you will have blood agar plate that you can use for the microorganisms. We will discuss each step in detail and I will try to explain all the steps and all the requirements for and how to prepare the blood agar and how to use blood agar in your microbiological experiments. So uh, with that note, let's start the presentation. Uh, before we move on to the presentation part, I have a quick request to make. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do subscribe to the channel because it motivates me. It provides me motivation to make more videos, more interesting, more uh, uh, fascinating videos on similar kinds of topics. So I hope you're going to support me and uh, uh, stay tuned to the channel and watch the video till the end. It helps me uh, to promote my video content and also uh, gives me tremend tremendous amount of satisfaction that I'm making these videos and they are really helpful for your studies. All right, with that note, let's jump onto the presentation part. All right, let's start with the first slide. Here, as I've already explained to you that, I'm trying to explain that we need one important component that is DSA. It's also known as blood agar base, tryptosoya agar, and then we need blood uh, to make the final blood agar plate, in short, BAP. Let's move on to the second slide where I'm trying to show you how to prepare the blood agar. As you can see, I have written in my first point that you need a blood agar base here. This is the illustration for blood agar, uh, blood agar base, which is also known as triptych soya agar. In the triptych soya agar, you have pancreatic digest of casein. Casein is mammalian milk protein. Why you need a protein? Because you need a nutritious environmental condition for the growth of the bacteria. And the amount of that is 15 gram. Then you need papaic digest of soya meal, which is five gram and NaCl salt, really an important component for the growth of the microorganism. And then you need agar base to solidify the media. After that, uh, this is just the preparation of the blood agar base. So you need to sterile this blood agar base by autoclaving. And after autoclaving, you will have a sterile blood agar base or triptych soya agar and uh, we'll make a different videos on uh, different video series on autoclaving but here i'm just telling you that you need to sterile the media using autoclaving and after autoclaving you need to cool down the media because immediately after autoclaving the media will be extremely hot so your media should be cooled down to 40 to 50 degrees centigrade temperature why because the hot media may lyse your RPCs. So blood is sensitive to temperature, so you need the media cooled down to the temperature which is around 40 to 50 degrees centigrade. So we called it as a, a little bit cold media, or we can say it's a warm media, and uh, that particular media you will use that particular uh, TSA media you will use for the preparation of the blood agar. Next step is you need 5% of the sterile defibrinated blood. 
So you can you can buy defibrinated blood from various uh, companies, and then you can use that blood, and you're you're going to buy mammalian defibrinated blood, uh, and uh, human defibrinated blood is uh, prohibited because of the human blood bond pathogens. So uh, most likely you're going to buy sheep defibrinated blood, and you're going to use that particular blood to mix with the blood agar base, which is in this case, triptych soya agar. And after mixing, you will plate in the Petri dishes that mixture, and that is going to give you these blood agar plates, right? As you can see in this illustration, I'm trying to show you blood agar plate. Uh, here, one important point uh, is that you need to uh, increase the temperature of the blood most likely you're gonna store the blood in in four degree uh, temperature condition in cold temperature condition and you want that blood to be at least warm to the room temperature right if you have cold media uh, sorry if you have cold blood that can uh, solidify the agar very very fast and you will have that solid media in your flask so you want your blood to be a little warmer and your uh, you want your media to be a little colder so that it uh, it is not going to affect your blood right so this this is how you can mix both of the component very carefully and then uh, try to avoid bubbles that that's what I have written here right you need to avoid the bubbles and then carefully pour the plates after that you will have these plates and and you can use these plates to grow your microorganisms now let's move on to the next sheet in this sheet I'm trying to tell you uh, some of the important facts about the blood agar one of the important fact is that it's a general purpose enriched media okay it provides extremely nutritious condition for the growth of the bacteria so most of the bacteria they are going to grow in this particular uh, plate because it's uh, an enriched media for the growth of the microorganism second important point is it's it's a differential media it can differentiate between different types of microorganism on the basis of hemolysis i will discuss hemolysis in my next video that is why in this video I'm discussing blood agar so that we have this particular story where we know how to prepare the blood agar and then we know how to streak the bacteria on blood agar and how to determine the hemolysis right on the basis of hemolysis you can differentiate between different types of microorganisms so you have alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis and gamma hemolysis all right what is the next point next point is human blood is uh, the use of human blood is discouraged. Why? Because of the human blood borne pathogens. So you don't want to use human blood because uh, you can get uh, the blood borne pathogens in your sample and that is dangerous. So it is the use of the human blood is discouraged and you are going to most likely you are going to use sheep blood for this purpose. And then you have uh, important and then you have uh, the, another important point is it's a it's not a selective medium right we know that selective media the definition of selective media is the medium that selects the growth of a specific kind of microorganism and inhibit the growth of other microorganisms in this case it's not going to inhibit the growth right that is why it's not a selective media it's a differential media because you can differentiate between different types of microorganism on the basis of the zone of hemolysis now next point is blood agar is not a consistently defined media you need to understand what is defined media and undefined media defined media is where you know what are the chemical constituent what are the components that are present in this media right in this case you are using blood and the composition of blood can vary organisms to organisms what is the condition that you are extracting blood at that time and uh, most likely you are not going to get a specific uh, composition of uh, chemical composition of the blood so it's not consistently defined media 
right? You are not going to get consistent result. Most likely you are not going to get consistent result with your blood agar. So that is why it's known as, uh, uh, it's not a consistently defined media. Another important point is while you are using blood, you need to follow a safety protocol. It's really important that uh, you need to follow all the lab safety protocol while you are doing these experiments. It's really, really extremely important. So I hope you are, you are, that you are paying attention to all the safety protocols while you are doing these experiments, right? And the final point is we will discuss after this video i'm going to discuss how you can grow microorganism and how you microorganisms and how you can differentiate between alpha beta and gamma hemolysis so right now uh, i have shown you how to make the blood agar plates so uh, i hope you are, you understand the process after that we are going to understand the zones of hemolysis and what uh, alpha beta and gamma hemolysis mean all right with that note i will conclude my presentation and i hope that you're going to support me by watching this video as well as sharing this particular video with your friends and if you like my video then please stay tuned to the channel and watch my other videos also it really helps me and motivates me to provide good quality content to my subscribers all right, with that note, I will just conclude my presentation and I'll see you in my next video presentation where we will discuss hemolysis, alpha, beta, and gamma.